trying to represent human rights around the world gave you a little trouble. You basically destroyed the organization. So you can't lead in this country if you show so little respect for democracy. You've got to let Senator, different voices well, flourish in foreign Mr. affairs. Harper, then Mr. Mr. Uh, I just recently was at an international meeting of Canadian international NGOs dealing with foreign aid. That's what the government of Canada does. But let me talk a minute about the G8 and G20 because it has come up time and time again. We're in a global economy. A recession came to this country through no fault of our own because of forces in the global economy. The G8 and the G20 have been vital to, respond to a global response to the crisis to ensure we did first didn't have a Great Depression and now that we are coming out through a recovery. We, did, we set important goals in that summit, including deficit and debt reduction targets for the world that Canada will achieve well ahead of time. So, you know, in this day and age where you're, you're in a global economy, you have to be part of global conferences and you have to be leading those conferences. Uh, and, Mr. Layton, and frankly, the world thinks Canada is the country Mr. Layton, leading Mr. Global, global recovery. But the, the world is also asking, uh, what happened? to Canada? Why is it now that the government there is being cited with contempt? Why is it now being known as a government that is so secretive and, and won't allow information out for its citizens? Why can't we even have open debates about foreign policy issues instead of having groups and organizations like Kairos, Rights and Democracy, we could go through the list, being shut down? Uh, yours is the most closed administration when it comes to discussing these issues that we've seen in some time. But let me ask you but simply Mr. this. Mr. Will you support my so suggestion that we meet and arrange with the Auditor General for that report on the funds for the G8, G20 to be released now that it's already been leaked in various versions. Let's have her final report released. Will you go along well, with Well, I'd that? be absolutely happy to see the real report. Uh, Mr. Layton, the... Well, then bring it out. Bring it out. Well, release all, it. It's, it's the Auditor what you, General's report. What are you afraid of? It's well, not the government. What are you waiting it? for? This, you this is the Auditor General's it? report. We encourage the Auditor General to release that report. We obviously don't like to see documents floating around. The Auditor General herself says uh, cannot be relied on. Well, it looks uh, but, like it takes a national speaker, debate to get a government document out of... Mr. Speaker, Mr. Layton, you said, Mr. Harper. Mr. Layton, Mr. Layton, you said how the world was looking at this situation right now. What the world is looking at right now and is, is saying, Canada's got the strongest recovery of any country on earth, and suddenly it's plunged into a fourth election in seven years, and Canadians don't know why. Canadians don't know why we're doing this, but I tell you what we do have to do. We have to get Parliament back to work focused on the economy, passing the good measures for people that were in our budget that pe we can afford without raising your taxes. That's what the country Mr. has to do. Mr. know exactly why we're having an election, Mr. Harper. We're having an election because you didn't tell Parliament the truth about your budget costs, about any of the numbers. They became unbelievable. The Parliament of Canada could not have confidence in anything you said, including on international aid. Minister Oda inserted a knot into a document falsified a document, misled the House of Commons, and eventually the confidence of the whole parliament was lost. That's why we're having an election, because you didn't tell Canadians the truth, because you abused democracy. That's why we're having an election. That's, that's simply not correct. You know, the numbers in our budget have been verified by private sector experts. They've been not been challenged. These numbers are accurate. We're having an election because the other three political parties saw an opportunity to go after the government. That's fine. I don't think Canadians agree. I think Canadians think we should not be focused on parliamentary squabbling, on censure motions, and these sorts of things. We should be focused on the economy. That's what we're doing. We've got, good, we've got good things in the budget to help pensioners, to help families, to help unemployed workers, to help our manufacturing sector. These are the things that Parliament should be dealing with and passing. Mr. Duceppe. Mr. Mr. Harper, you said quite a few times when you were the leader of the official opposition that a prime minister, especially a prime minister of a monetary government, should always respect the decisions made by the House of Commons by the elected members of the House of Commons. Otherwise, that prime minister would act with no moral at all. It was immoral not to respect the decision of the House of Commons. You said that and you were right at that time. How come that now, since you're Prime Minister of a monetary government, every single time you don't agree with a decision made by the House of Commons, you don't remember what you were preaching at the time. I'd like to have an explanation on well, that. Well, Mr. Duceppe, this government, we have run the longest minority government in Canadian history. We've got a lot of things done. We don't always agree. That's just the reality of Parliament. This government attempts 
to listen to all the other parties. Our recent budget had elements the other parties had asked for. But can we say we're all going to agree? No, we can't. But when you're the government, you ultimately have to take responsibility for the decision, be accountable to Canadian people. That's what we're running on, our strong economic record, and that's why we are asking for another mandate. But you didn't walk the talk on what you were saying. Not at all. Mr. Layton well, and Mr. Ignatiev. True. And we've had so many instances now where the House of Commons has uh, put forward important ideas that uh, you've simply turned around and rejected. Uh, and sometimes, I'm thinking particularly of our climate change bill, for example, went through the House of Commons twice. And yet uh, you used the Senate, which you packed with your friends and defeated candidates and fundraisers, some of whom are up on fraud charges now, and you used that Senate to defeat a bill that called for accountability of no matter which party would be in power in Canada so that we could have a climate change plan that would actually move us forward. I, I, uh, it, well, let, it's such a disrespect let, let for me, democracy, Mr. Explain, Harper, that, I, I, that, that, that it really isn't acceptable. Let, let me explain our position on that bill. We've been strongly opposed to that bill throughout. The reason is that bill has no actual measures to achieve objectives. It just sets targets. You can't achieve something by just setting a target. You can't just pass a bill declaring the unemployment rate to be 2%. You actually have to have the measures that will achieve that. When it comes to climate change, we're working internationally on the Copenhagen Accord, which now is a framework to include all emitters. That's what we saw. It. We're working with the Obama administration on a continental approach for our integrated industries. That's something the opposition asked for. And we're continuing through this budget to invest billions of dollars in green energy and energy efficiency. Mr. That's what the, that's the, what Canadians the wanted us to do. That's what, that's what, Canadi you've know that's what Canadians wanted ever, us to do. You've got to know where you're going if you're ever you've got to know where you're going if you're ever going to get there. And that's what that bill was all about. And you don't want us to be taking strong action on climate change. I think most Canadians know that. You prefer to subsidize uh, your friends in the big oil companies. Gentlemen, got to be the, fair with the time, Mr. Gnack. The original question was about your vision of Canada and the world. Uh, you have failed to win a seat on the Security Council. You achieved nothing at the G8, G20. You shut down indep every independent organization that's trying to do good in Africa or Asia if it disagrees with your ideology. If we're going to have a foreign policy, it's got to be based on democratic values. Respect for Canadians when they go overseas, respect for what they're trying to do, not trying to muzzle people, shut people down. Let some flowers bloom here. Let democracy breathe. Let it live. If you're going to promote it abroad as we should, you've got to respect it at home. You're a man who will shut down anything you cannot control. That's the core of your vision of government. And it's inimical. It's hostile to the values of democracy upon which this country is based. Well, Mr. Ignatieff, this is simply not true. Canada is one of the most forceful promoters of freedom, democracy, human rights, the rule of law at home and abroad. When it comes to our foreign aid, our foreign aid is delivered largely through private organization and international partners. That's largely how we do it. And you we don't work, let them we do work their with other job. people. The idea that we're shutting them down or muzzling, this is just simply not based on any fact. Canada, as I say right Tell now, the most the important initiative we have right now on child and maternal health, we've attracted billions of dollars to deal with the health problems of the most vulnerable people on the planet. And we have all other countries, international organizations working with us. That's the kind of thing Canada is really doing in the world. Well, in Parliament, all we have is this kind of mudslinging, accusations, bickering back and forth. We're out there actually making a difference in the world. That's what Canadians expect of us. Gentlemen, uh, that, you want last 20 seconds yes, on that? Yes. 20 seconds. I, I look at the Foreign Affairs Department budget in 2008, 2009, $6 billion. 2009, 2010, $14 billion. What's the explanation? I, I'm not sure what figures you're quoting, uh, Mr. Duceppe. I can, tell, I can, tell, you, I can tell you this. I can tell you this, that Canada was the first country to, to fulfill its commitment to double its aid to Africa to double its foreign aid, and we have made sure during this recession that we have not reduced right. foreign aid, but we are making the decision to, wrong with that explanation. to make that foreign aid more effective. The, ex that, that's the explanation is a $6.6 billion dollar check to GM in Detroit. Okay, that's gentlemen, the that, brings to, that brings to a conclusion this segment. We now go on to question three, the broad theme of which is governance. And this is the segment where the one-on-one -on -one will feature Stephen Harper against Michael Ignatieff. Let's go to our question from Newfoundland and Labrador. I'm Sam Diamond from Mount Pearl, Newfoundland, Labrador. It's very likely that whoever wins the next election will have another minority government. How do you plan on working with the other parties to turn a minority parliament into a functioning, trustworthy institution that Canadians can be proud of? 
Okay, Mr. Harper, you have added first. Well, first of all, I, I think I've been fairly clear in saying I hope that Canadians do elect a majority government. I think the cycle of election after election, minority after minority, is beginning to put some of the country's interests in serious jeopardy. But I will, we will, of course, continue to do what we've done. We've been elected twice as a minority government. We've tried to work with the other parties. I think if you look at our platform and our programs, they reflect ideas that have come from well outside our party. But obviously, in the end, the government must take responsibility for its decisions and must be accountable to Canadians, and that's what we will continue to do. Mr. Ignatieff. Sam, we're having an election this time because Mr. Harper didn't tell Parliament the truth about, about any of his economic promises. $30 billion on jets, $13 billion on prisons, $6 billion on unaffordable tax cuts. Parliament, the Speaker of the House of Commons held uh, the government in contempt. This is a Prime Minister who shut down Parliament twice. We need to rebuild our democracy after Mr. Harper. Mr. Harper cannot be trust trusted with the institutions of our country. It's as simple as that. This is a man who simply will shut down anything he can't control. He shut down Parliament twice. If you're asking me how we rebuild democracy, it means working with other parties, listening to other people's ideas, letting democracy flourish, making sure we listen to Canadians and treat them with respect, instead of replacing this system of continuous, constant control. You two are allowed to have at it now. Yeah, well, I appreciate I appreciate <laughs> the opportunity. First of all, everybody should realize the so-called contempt motion Mr. Ignatius speak of is not a ruling of a court or a ruling of the speaker. It was simply a case of the other three parties outvoting us. We don't agree with that. We don't agree with that, that that is what Parliament should be focused on. Parliament had before it a budget, a budget that contained the next phase of Canada's economic action plan that outlined important benefits for Canadian seniors, for workers, for entrepreneurs, for industry. That budget was well received across the political spectrum, not just by the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, even the Canadian Labour Congress. That's what Parliament should be working on. It is unfortunate we're at that stage, but that's where we're at today. And if we have a minority government, my fear is we will go through a fifth election and a sixth election. I think at some point Canadians have to make a decision. We believe we're on the right track. We're asking Canadians for a clear majority so we can get on with the nation's business and focused on, on the economy. But Mr. Harper, you haven't earned a majority. Majorities are things you earn when you earn the trust of the Canadian people. And you haven't earned the trust of the Canadian people because you don't trust the Canadian people. Why, just two weeks ago at a meeting in, uh, in London, you threw somebody out of your meetings because you didn't like what was on their Facebook page. There was a veteran who wanted to get into one of your meetings and you tossed them out because you thought, oh my God, he might ask me a difficult question. I mean, this isn't strong leadership, Mr. Harper. This is weak leadership. What are you afraid of? Why are you afraid of the Canadian people? We need a, we need a leader here who respects Canadian people, renews Canadian democracy, answers tough questions when he's put to it by the Canadian people. What are you afraid of? Why, why, why are you displaying this kind of persistent as Prime Minister, is controlling I think Canadians what you can't are aware shut down. that I've gone across this country, not just during campaigns, to meet regularly with Canadians from all walks of life. That's one of the reasons, as a minority government, we've been able to stay in office, because we've stayed connected with Canadians, with their real challenges and their real needs. And, you know, I, I, you know, I don't think this kind of political bickering, personal attacks back and forth, is frankly going to do anything for Canadians. What we need this to do is lay out where we're going to take the economy. That's what this government's done. We're on the right track. Let's move forward. And in terms of trust, I trust the Canadian people. They've elected us twice. If they don't elect us, I will accept that judgment. But we trust the Canadian people, people's judgment. We ask them to take a look at all the platforms of the party and ask themselves, are these things really affordable? And do we want to stay on a low tax economic track or go on to a high tax one? Mr. Gnatty. You trust the Canadian people so little that when you didn't like something on someone, young person's Facebook, you toss them out of their meeting. When a veteran wants to ask you a tough question, you make sure he doesn't get into the hole. What kind of respect is that? You've got to walk the walk here, Mr. Harper, and you haven't. You've shut down Parliament twice. You've been found in contempt of Parliament by the Speaker of the House of Commons twice. You keep talking about Parliament as if it's this little debating society that's a pesky interference in your rule of the country. It's not. It's the Parliament of the people of Canada, and they found you in contempt. And you're the first Prime Minister in the history of Canada 
Canada for that to happen well, and, to. And so Mr. you explain Maddie, that to the Canadian Maddie, people, will you? That's why we're having an election. And Canadians will make a judgment as to whether that action by your three parties was, was valid or whether what we should have been doing was focusing on the economy.